Hello students, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are all doing good. In today's session, we shall understand another topic of catabolism of amino acid that is deamination. I am Dr. M. Bhushanam, Associate Professor in Zoology, Maharani Science College for Women, Bengaluru. The learning objective of today's study is to understand how the amino acids undergo catabolism by the process of deamination. So, content includes under the concept of catabolism of amino acids, the process of deamination. Well, students, as we discussed in the earlier video, the amino acids and their degradation or catabolism takes place majorly by two steps. Step one is the process of transamination. In transamination, the amino group of an amino acid gets transferred to another amino acid that is from donor amino acid the amino group is transferred to the acceptor amino acid and the process is catalyzed by the enzyme transaminase and it requires a coenzyme also. About this concept of transamination we had discussed in detail in the previous session. In today's session we shall concentrate on the second step of amino acid degradation that is deamination. Deamination is the second step of amino acid Deamination is the second step of amino acid degradation. In this step, an amino uh, group is completely removed from an amino acid or from a protein. B means to separate out or to remove. Amination refers to ammonia or amino group. So, deamination is the second major step of amino acid degradation or hydrolysis of amino acid which is followed immediately after the process of transamination. So, down in the picture when you look at you can see how the amino group is getting removed from an amino acid. The major sites of deamination that is the process of removal of amino, uh, amino group include the organs such as liver and kidneys. Students remember here the free ammonia is very very toxic and very dangerous to a cell or an organism. So, ammonia kills an organism very easily when its concentration increases, but this do not happen that easily in the body system. Ammonia which is toxic is immediately converted into less toxic or not toxic form of a product called as urea. So, this chemical of urea gets synthesized immediately in the liver and sent it to um, the kidneys through the blood system for the process of excretion. So, soon after the process of transamination, 
deamination takes place in liver and soon after deamination liver synthesizes urea and this urea will be immediately removed by the help of kidneys. So, deamination is a process of removal of amino group from an amino acid and makes that amino acid um, as alpha keto acid. So, this end product of alpha keto acid now will enter into energy production uh, for example, TC cycle. So, down in the picture you can see how the liver helps in the uh, uh, preparation of or production of urea from the um, ammonia that is freely released. Same here. So, liver helps in the process of transamination and deamination. Ultimate product is the urea formed and the urea is now transferred to uh, kidneys for the process of excretion through the blood system. So, this is what the picture here refers to. Students remember once if an amino acid loses its ammonia group on it, we call it as alpha keto acid. So, an amino acid after losing the amino group becomes a keto acid. So, this process of deamination is also catalyzed and controlled by the enzyme group called as deaminases. So, when you look at here the process of deamination where the ammonia is released out of uh, released out from the amino acid by the help of deaminases. So, in case of human beings deamination takes place when we consume excess of proteins. So, this is one of the causative factor for the accumulation of the amino based amino acids. So, thus more of free ammonia is produced which is converted into urea through a cycle of chemical reactions called urea cycle or ornithine cycle that we are going to understand in the next session and it takes place in the liver. So, free ammonia is immediately converted into less toxic urea and later urea is released out or expre, uh, uh, excreted out of the body of the organism. So, deamination is a site is majorly seen in the liver than other sites of the body followed by which is the formation of urea and urea is uh, removed by the help of the kidneys. Students, the process of deamination can be classified into two types based on the process of oxidation. So, oxidation refers to the process of Well, students, the process of oxidation refers to loss of the electrons. So, we have two types of deamination. Number one is oxidative deamination. It is a process where there the use of oxidation process is seen. In second type is non-oxidative deamination that do not make use of the oxidation process. So, when you look at the picture down here to its left side is oxidation process where 
there is loss of electrons from an amino acid, glutamic acid here, and that forms a keto acid and the ammonia as a waste product. So in non-oxidative deamination, an amino acid will directly break to uh, pyruvate and ammonia in case of sevane. So ammonia is directly uh, uh, released. Let's start with the understanding of oxidative deamination now. The very purpose of deamination is removal of the ammonia, which is a toxic substance. So if the liberation of ammonia from an amino acid is coupled with the process of oxidation, we call it as oxidative deamination. The major sites of these reactions are the liver and kidneys. So in the process of oxidative deamination, glutamate is formed from transamination that will enter into the oxidative deamination process. That is, the amino group from the glutamate will be removed and this process is catalyzed by the enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase or simply we call it as glutamate oxidase. In short, we call it as GDH that is glutamate dehydrogenase. So this enzyme actually removes the amino group from the glutamate and this GDH is also associated with the cofactor NAD plus or NADP plus. I mean to say the enzyme GDH is not independent by its activity. So it has to dependent, uh, uh, depend on its coenzyme or cofactor NAD or NADP plus. So that is what we see in the uh, picture down in the slide. Let us now understand the characteristics of the enzyme GDH that is glutamate dehydrogenase. This GDH is a mitochondrial enzyme. As we know that mitochondria are the cell organelles which are distributed in all the cells. So this is an enzyme, GDH is an enzyme related to mitochondria that contains six identical units and made up of zinc. The molecular weight is 56 kilodaltons and the activity of enzyme is inhibited by um, GTPs or ATPs. Otherwise, the activity of enzyme is increased by the concentration of GDPs and ADPs. The GDH activity is also inhibited by many hormones of a body system such as uh, thyroid stimulating hormone or uh, TSH or other steroids. So overall activity of the enzyme generally seems to be very high in mitochondria of cells or tissues. So here is a picture that depicts how a glutamate is converted into alpha ketoglutamate with the help of the GDH by the usage of cofactor NAD which is converted into NADH and the process uh, ends up with the release of ammonia. So as we have learnt earlier that oxidizes or oxidases are general group of enzymes that are involved in the process of oxidative deamination, right? So there are two types of oxidase enzymes. 
it is based on the oxidation process carried on the type of amino acids. There are L amino acids and D amino acids. Dextro rotatory, levo rotatory amino acids. Dextro rotatory are towards right side orientation, levo are towards left side orientation. So, accordingly, we have oxidases of L amino acid oxidases and D amino acid oxidases. So, this is based on the rotatory uh, feature of the amino acid. Let us now understand L amino acid oxidases. These are enzymes present in the liver and kidneys. As we find less L amino acids, the L amino acid oxidases are correspondingly lesser in the body system. Hence, they show no significant role. The L amino acid oxidases also make use of the coenzyme namely FMN that is flavin derived cofactor it is of. When L amino acids are oxidized and deaminated, the end products formed will be of alpha ketoglutarate, ammonia and hydrogen peroxide. Students remember when L amino acids are getting oxidized by L amino acid oxidases, the end products that are formed are of alpha ketoglutarate which loses ammonia group then the ammonia that gets separated will also be released. Along with these two products, we also find hydrogen peroxide that is H2O2. So, these are the major um, uh, end products that are seen of oxidation of L amino acids. So, based on the end products form, we can say which type of amino acid it is of uh, uh, in presence of the L amino acid oxidases and FMN. Students remember these enzymes cannot act on L amino acid uh, uh, such as glycine and glutamic acid and aspartic acids because they are carboxylic uh, decarboxylic acids. So, here is a picture that depicts how exactly an L glutamate is converted into the product of ketoglutarate along with the release of ammonia and during which there is formation of H2O2. The next group of oxidases are D amino acid oxidases. Here, the D amino acids are oxidized and deaminated by using D amino acid oxidases. The end products formed are generally ammonia and keto acids, as what we see in the picture here down. So, we have D amino acid which is oxidized in presence of the amino acid oxidases to form alpha keto acid plus the ammonia is released. Their the D amino acid oxidases also act similar to that of the alpha amino acid oxidases, but they do their function on D amino acid. So, the site of D amino acid oxidative deamination is only liver. So, uh, kidneys are not involved here. So, the enzyme used here is D amino acid oxidase and this makes use of a coenzyme FAD. So, down is the picture that depicts how a D amino acid is uh, oxidized in presence of D amino acid oxidase 
where the ammonia is released and hydrogen peroxide also released to form the alpha keto acid. But it makes use of the coenzyme FAD. Students, if NAD is used, it is the L amino acid oxidase. Here, FAD is used generally. So, after we understanding the oxidative deamination, let us now understand non oxidative deamination process. Here, in this process, liberation of ammonia takes place from the amino acids without the process of oxidation. Students remember deamination if it is not coupled with oxidation process we call it as non oxidative deamination. So, down is the process where you can see how the serine amino acid is converted into pyruvate in presence of the enzymes related. So, there are many groups of enzymes that catalyzes non oxidative deamination reaction and they are commonly called as non oxidative deaminases. But the major ones uh, which are specifically called as amino acid dehydratase. So, dehydrase or dehydratases and amino acid desulfohydrases. So, dehydrases and desulfhydrases, these are the two major um, uh, enzymes which come under non-oxidative deaminases. Let us first understand all uh, amino acid dehydratases or dehydrases. Students, these are the enzymes that remove ammonia group from an amino acid that contain hydroxyl group. So, amino acids that contain hydroxyl group will be uh, uh, utilized by dehydratase enzymes for the removal of the ammonia. So, it includes amino acids such as serine, homocerine and threonine. It makes use of coenzyme PLP that is pyridoxal phosphate as what we have seen in transamination. So, the end products that are formed during the reaction are ammonia and hydrogen. So, that is what you find in the uh, picture down. So, here is the reaction. How an amino acid in presence of PLP is con getting converted into pyruvate with the release of uh, ammonia. The second group of uh, non oxidative deaminases includes the enzymes alpha, uh, uh, amino acid desulfhydrases. Amino acid desulfhydrases. So, these enzymes will remove the amino group from the amino acid that contains sulfur groups in them. So, best examples for Sulfur containing amino acids are cysteine, homocysteine. So, here this enzyme called the desulfhydrase also makes use of the PLP as coenzyme, and the end products formed are um, ammonia and hydrogen sulfide. Students, here is a picture that depicts how that desulfhydrase is helps in the removal of the sulfur group as well as the ammonia group. The clinical reverence of the amino acid metabolism related to deamination and transamination when we look at following up the disorders that we find in the um, deformity or abnormal amino acid metabolism. The first one to start is phenylcutaneuria. It is a defect of phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme that results in the impairment of the conversion of phenylalanine to tyrosine. So, phenylalanine to tyrosine conversion will be stopped when there is a defect in the uh, phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme. And this 
results in the accumulation of more of phenylalanine in the body system and that is in the cells that will lead to psychomotor delay and seizures. As what you find in the picture down here where you find symptoms of uh, uh, affected individuals of PKE. The second major defect is related to maple syrup urinesis. It is a defect in dehydrogenase enzyme. So, this dehydrogenase enzyme results in the accumulation of branched chain of amino acids that will affect the cognitive disabilities, sweet smelling urine and dystonia. So, these are all the major uh, uh, deformities and symptoms related to maple uh, syrup urine disorder. I have down is the picture that depicts how a syndrome of um, I mean the affected individual of maple syrup urine disease used to be. Next disorder is homocystinuria. It is a defect related to cysta thionine beta synthetase enzyme. So, with this leads to the accumulation of homocysteine in the body. Thus, flushing, developmental delay, lens dislocation in the eyes, then vascular diseases that is heart related problems and osteoporosis or the weakened uh, bone system is developed in the individuals. As the picture depicts down, these are all the symptoms of homocysteinuria. The next disorder is tyrosinemia. It is a deficiency of fumaryl acetoacetate hydrolase enzyme. Thus, tyrosine catabolism is affected. So, when the tyrosine concentration increases in the body system, it affects the liver and it leads to uh, deficient weight gain, then peripheral nerve diseases, kidney issues, the individuals will develop. The next disorder is alcaptinuria. It is a deficiency of homogentesic acid dioxygenase enzyme. So, this leads to um, the presence of bluish black discoloration of the uh, connective tissues, arthritis and calcification of various organs are seen in the body system. Well, students, now we shall recapitulate the content that we have learnt in today's session. We have understood deamination is a process uh, where ammonia is removed from a protein or an amino acid, thus a keto acid is formed. This process involves the major organs like liver and kidney and it makes use of the enzyme group called deaminases. So, there are two types of deamination process namely oxidative and non-oxidative deamination. In the process of oxidative deamination, you find oxidation process getting coupled with the deamination process. It takes place in the liver and kidneys. So, you find generally the soon after the removal of the uh, um, ammonia, oxidation process also gets involved. So, at the same time, you find oxidative deamination is controlled by the major enzyme called as GDH or glutamate dehydrogenase to liberate ammonia. And this process uh, of enzyme activity is uh, uh, um, enzyme makes use of a cofactor NAD or NADP. So, we have understood GDH is a mitochondrial enzyme that has six identical units with a zinc component in it. There are two types of oxidases of uh, uh, um, deamination process with that includes L-amino acid oxidases and D-amino acid oxidases. L-amino acid oxidases uh, are less in their uh, presence and activity uh, because less a number of uh, uh, L-amino acids are seen in our body system and this takes place in liver and kidneys. It makes use of uh, dehydrogenase enzyme and cofactor FMN. So, uh, deaminates, deamination process of L-amino acids 
thus forms the products like ammonia and hydrogen peroxide. The enzymes do not react with the glycine and decarboxylic acids such as glutamic acid and aspartic acid. The D amino acid oxidases are deaminated by the amino, uh, amino acid oxidase that results in the formation of ammonia and alpha keto acids and it has the phenomenon uh, dependent on a coenzyme called FAD. It takes place in the liver. The next process is non-oxidative deamination where deamination process is not coupled with the oxidation process. It makes use of two types of enzymes namely amino acid dehydratases and amino acid sulfhydrases. Dehydratases are the enzymes where the amino acids that contain hydroxyl group uh, uh, will be used such as serine, homocerine and threonine. It is these sulfhydrases are the enzymes that will uh, 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 remove the amino group from the sulfur containing amino acids such as cysteine and homocysteine. We find the disorders related to this amino acid metabolism and catabolism leads to the disorders such as phenylcutinuria, maple syrup urine disease, homocysteinuria, tyrosinemia and alcaptinuria etc. So the outcome of today's session is students we have understood how amino acids undergo a uh, deamination process of catabolism. After we understanding the concept, let us now try to answer the multiple choice questions related to the session. Glutamate is metabolically converted into alpha ketoglutarate and ammonia by the process called as the deamination. Catabolism of amino acids majorly require how many stages Actually to speak we have three stages but major stages since they have as it is only two that is transamination and deamination. So decarboxylation is also there but that is not counted here. Which reaction is required for the removal of alpha amino group to form uh, ammonia? So we require the process of both A and C that is transamination and deamination. So we are removing alpha amino group from ammonia. So uh, we call it as transamination as well as deamination, both A and C is correct. The reaction involving glutamate dehydrogenase enzymes reversibly linking to glutamate metabolism to which cycle? So it is related to the TCA cycle. Oxidative deamination is the conversion of amino acid to keto acid plus ammonia. So answer is C. Which of this hereditary disease is caused due to error in amino acid metabolism? It is phenylcutinuria. So answer is C. Well students, the references includes web references of wikipedia and britannica.com and book references includes uh, Animal Physiology and Biochemistry by Dr. K. V. Sastri and Biochemistry uh, a book published by Kosip in 1990 uh, by Bangalore University. Thank you all students.